Hello and welcome to another Beer Clever video. This video is my build for the Encounter Terrain 10x10 challenge for June, which I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do or not. And as I stand here, I'm just starting, so I still don't know whether I'm going to be able to actually finish, but I'm going to give it a go. The theme is accessibility, which is a really cool theme. It has opened up a lot of opportunities and possibilities in my mind. Uh, and with a little bit of thought, I have had an idea of something which I think I would like to make, which does fit the theme. So I will flash up on the screen now this beautiful picture of the Snowdonia Railway. Now that is pure accessibility. That is giving access to that beautiful mountain to those who aren't fit enough or capable of climbing and what, what better thing. And I love that mountain, I've climbed it several times uh, and the, uh, the train up to the top is something which I love as well. So it's going to be a fun one, it's going to be very very interesting to try to achieve that in such a tiny scale uh, but hopefully I'll be able to do it. I'm going to try to do five to ten minutes a day as I do. I'm actually three days in already because of uh, I'm so busy with work so it's hard to find time to hobby at the moment but I really want to keep my streak going uh, and I believe that this might even be my tenth uh, entry I think so yeah let's not miss that one uh, so yeah it's been uh, it's gonna be a good one it's gonna be a fun one hopefully it'll be relatively simple not too many new techniques um, but I might need to get my magnifying glass out a bit I reckon so enough rambling let's uh, let's have a look at the uh, at what's on the table let's have a look at what the secret item is and uh, and yeah then let's get making so here we are we are ready to start uh, I've got the secret thing which was a miniature so I've used one of the oofs uh, many oofs just because it made me laugh I love them I've got loads printed out uh, so the idea I've got as I said and as I've shown you already on the screen is this uh, fantastic shot of the uh, Snowdonia railway coming up um, now what I'm probably going to try to do and I don't know whether I'm going to achieve this what I'm probably going to try to do is do this headland and then I'm probably going to try and print out this picture but have it so that the headland is kind of on the in reality and then when you're looking at it straight on you've got this lovely backdrop behind it so that's my plan anyway whether that works or not is another matter but the first part that I'm going to need to do is I've got my 10 centimeter square uh, thing here is I'm going to need to basically use modeling compound as you probably would have guessed knowing me to make up this rough uh, this rough layout here so if we consider that to be the front what it's going to do is it's going to be coming up towards uh, towards the camera actually which is going to make it an interesting one to photograph it's coming up towards the viewer with the railway coming in a curving loop like this and then a nice curved headland out there. Now, uh, I'm probably going to need to do this very, very tiny. So the railway road, the railway lane, is probably only going to be the front corner because there's actually like a little kind of outcropping there. So we're going to want to capture that. So I'm going to mix up some modeling compound. I'll probably run the camera and point it at it and put some music on. And I'm going to attempt to sculpt that in, in the uh, modeling compound, which should be should be doable, I think. Uh, I just need to do it very carefully um, and not feel too much pressure. Um, so yeah, let's see what happens and uh, see whether this is going to be an idea that flies. Uh, and if it doesn't, I'll come up with something else. So I'll get myself ready and then pop some music on and you can watch as I attempt to do this. Right then, that didn't take as long as I thought it might, and I actually think it's okay. So what we'll have is we'll have the, the railroad coming in around here. This is going to be a rocky bluff, which is actually just out of shot on the picture. And then we have the little kind of like inletty kind of uh, gully here. And then we have the headland coming out over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my knife and very carefully cut down 
these, these areas here which are still blue so that they're a part of the slope um, and then when that's done I'm going to let that to dry and then we'll come back and next thing I'll do is I'll put some probably put some white grout over it white grout mix and PVA just to kind of seal it and then it'll be a case of decorating it with the uh, with flock and with stones and then uh, and also obviously working on the train which I've got some quite nice ideas about I'm going to scratch build that as well so yeah uh, that went well uh, I'll, I'll get that carving done now uh, next time you see it it'll be carved and we'll start to look at doing the um, doing the finishing off of this it's going to be quick if this works well <laughs> so I've just mixed up uh, some white grout PVA and very finely sifted sand uh, there is a link in the description below to how I do that and what that gives me is a really nice texture that I can paint over the top of a base that goes very very solid very quickly indeed actually it gives a little bit of texture you can control how much texture you get by how much and what size of grit you mix in so it's a very flexible paste that dries quick goes hard and uh, is, is really easy to use. Now I've just realised I've started doing this and I've not got any, uh, not got my base. Uh, I normally set these on a, uh, a little kind of like grid. So I'm just going to go and grab that so you can see that as well in case you haven't seen it before. Um, and as you can see I've almost finished painting it already so I'll just go and grab something to sit it on. So here we are, this is what I sit my things on so that I can move them around and I don't have to get my finger near what I've painted on. As you can see, it's already going off. It really does dry very quickly. I'm going to apply it around the edge as well, just to finish it off. Um, while it does dry quickly, I, am, I still do normally leave it quite a long time. And I might indeed do two coats. And this is where the other thing to say about this stuff is, I can pop this in the fridge now. Um, often I forget about it and come back and find it's all gone off, but it's, it trips off of plastic quite easily. It's better for use on... Um, foam or modeling compound but yeah this will be still be good tomorrow so if I pop this in the fridge now leave it in the fridge the uh, the little kind of like tray I've got here uh, then it will still be good in the morning which is really cool so I can mix up and do two coats with the same mix and not waste anything so I think I'm going to do that so there we are that's how quick and easy it is to apply the texture. Um, I'll do a second coat without filming. The next time I'll come to this project, we'll probably be looking at doing um, either the, um, probably look at doing the texturing and uh, building the train track. And then I've got to start making the train. So what I need to do is I need to get an approximation of this very yellowy green grass. So what I've got is I've got some yellow and I've got some green and hopefully that's gonna work for me. I'm not gonna paint it, I'm gonna dry brush it. So I only need a very small amount of each. So what I do when I want a very small amount of something is I shake the bottle up and then use the bottle lid because that is a really good way of getting a small amount of paint and it also means that you're much less likely to spill it which is a good thing when you yeah, don't want to spill things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some yellow onto my palette and I'm going to take some green and that's probably going to be way too much and I probably need to have more yellow looking at that. So we'll just keep adding yellow until we get something that approximates what I'm looking at there. Which actually, that's not looking too bad, is it? Maybe a little bit more yellow. There we are. So once I've mixed that up, what I need to do is get my dry brush and I'm just going to dry brush that all over the all, all over everything so I'll come in for, for this I'll come in with some more gravel so um, let me get a dry brush and we'll paint that on and then we can let that dry and uh, then go on to the next step so here goes let's see how this works sort of thing that could completely ruin it or work very nicely of course you don't want to use flock on something at this scale because it will just be crazy big. You need to use something like dry brushing with the texture underneath it. There we are, I think that's come out quite nicely. Actually, let me shift the camera and get them a bit closer together so you can see. I actually think that has worked superbly against all the odds. So there we are. So uh, next step will be to do the stones. 
um, and the actual track and then it'll be a case of working on the train so yeah coming on well next step on this build is to do the stones and the assorted gravel that is scattered around um, this is going to be a multi stage process and the first stage is looking at this bucket which is unsifted sand from my back bank i use this to uh, when i sift this i put this in with the with the grout so this is going to be the second time i've used this because i mixed this stuff in with the grout already um, and what we can see is if i pan across and we look at the picture you can see that it's very pale rocks and i think that those rocks are going to work look really well if they're modeled using this unsifted sand so i'm about to get stuck into that now uh, i will set the camera up um, i'm going to use my modeling glue to just put a thin sheen on um, and then stick these down and then when that's completely dry i'll come along and do another coat of the modeling uh, glue over the top. Uh, this stuff doesn't glue very well. Uh, it's uh, it, it just doesn't seem to want to glue. So it's going to be a multi-stage process, like I say. Um, once this is done, then we're going to start to look at the at the actual track, which is the bit that I'm most excited about, and I have some pretty cool ideas. So I've got myself a small brush, uh, and what I'm going to do, I won't do all of this on camera, but I wasn't going to do any on camera, and I thought, you know what, no, I should do. What I'm going to do is do this very, very carefully. So it's actually going to take quite some time, I think. Um, but it's Sunday morning and I have a few minutes. This is my hobby time for the week. So uh, I'm just going to take my time and try and do it right. So what we'll do is we'll put a little bit of glue in a place like that. And then I'll come along and I'll look for some bits of dirt or bits of gravel and literally just drop them in. And I'm probably not going to do them individually, all of it, but this is where the upright cliffs are. So for this bit, I want to make sure they sit right. Otherwise, it will look odd. So we're looking for long, thin bits. I'm, I'm going to place them in pretty much individually on this. And when they've dried, then I'll, as I said it before, I will come along and I will do another coat to secure them. The rest of the stones will be much more randomly placed and I won't need to, to take so much effort to position them but this bit I definitely do want to so there we are so I'm going to carry on like this for the next half hour or so probably just placing these little bits of stone and making them look really awesome and uh, when I'm done I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like so the next thing to do is we'll start working on the track um, how I'm going to do this I hope it's going to work is I'm gonna draw a little bead of PVA glue, my watered down PVA glue, my terrain glue, um, along the track where I want the track to go. <laughs> the track where I want the track to go. And then I have some grout, which I'm gonna very carefully sprinkle on. Now it's black grout, I think, and I'm gonna not totally sure what color it's gonna actually turn out. So it might be that I need to do some painting of this um, after it's dry. But this will at least give me the little raised track section that you can see um, and will then be something I can build up on for the, um, for the actual, put, put the actual tracks onto. Now I'm deliberately making it wider as it comes uh, forward because I'm trying to do some forced perspective on this as well. Um, so I want it to be quite thin back here and then get wider as it comes around that corner and potentially build up a bit here as well if you have a look at the picture. So this could work or it could ruin the whole thing. So let's see. Just gonna get a little spoon. Or even better, this. And then let's see if this is gonna work or not. Because what I'll do is I'll scatter it over and then empty it back in. Right, let's, uh, let's empty that off. And try and get it to go. Yep, there we are. Right, so that has made quite a mess, which I thought it might. But that will brush off, so I'm not too worried about that. I just demonstrate that that will brush off before I panic too much. <laughs> so I just get another soft bristle brush 
And yeah, just a little bit of time, we'll get that off there. Yeah, it might take some doing, but as you can see, I can clean that off quite okay. So I'm actually gonna do that now, just in case any moisture gets on it and then it will stay. So let's just quickly clean this up. If needed, I can always come back and do a little bit more of the paint on it as well. So I'm gonna keep cleaning that up. I'll bring you along and show what it looks like. But the actual track has worked well. What I'm gonna to need to do when, when this is dry is paint that a little bit gray on the edges. But yeah, there we are, a bit of progress. Okay, so it's been a little while. I've had a very, very busy time at work, hardly been able to get to this. But I do need to crack on, because now it is Tuesday, and uh, this is the second week. So what I need to do here is just kind of come along with this gray paint, and probably make it a bit more of a dry brush. Uh, there we are. So with a little bit of a dry brush, and just put this light gray paint along the edges of the track, because that's what it's got. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint this on and uh, fill that little grey area around the outside. And when that's done, which I will do very quickly, or dry very quickly, then the next thing that I'll be looking at doing is the actual tracks. So we are making some good progress here. I'm glad that I didn't go too overboard this month. Well, just a little bit of grey going along, a little bit more around here on that corner as you can see, and a little bit on this side as well. There we are. Just needs that dusty black in the middle mainly, which is where the line's going to go. There we are. So we've got some grey on that now. So what I'm going to do is uh, get myself some wire and we're going to do the tracks. So the plan here is to use the thin wire as the tracks. And I think this is actually going to take more than just this evening to do. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it down. I'm going to glue one down with some super glue at this end. When that's gone off, I will then keep shaping it round and keep putting dubs of super glue on, just tiny dubs of super glue until it's all the way round and then I will do the second one and then what I can do is I can come along and I can snip off the ends and I think that's going to be the best way to get this rather than trying to rush it because once I've done this then all I've got to do really is the uh, train so I may as well take a couple of days to get this right. So we're just going to put a little bit of super glue in here. The risk for this is that um, I knock it <laughs> and then the, uh, the wire gets detached that way. But what I'm gonna do is just come in here, hold that down, wait for that to go off and, uh, and then I will put a little more super glue and a little more super glue around. So I'll do that off camera because we're a bit dull. Um, but when I've finished doing this, I will come back and show what it looks like. So the rails are in, they're okay. They're not quite as good as I wanted, but it was actually far fiddlier than I expected to do that. But I, I, they're definitely rails and I'm happy with how that looks. So I'm going to do probably a little bit more weathering on this, but next I need to start working on the train, which is the final piece of the puzzle, obviously. Uh, and what I've got here is the sprue, which is actually from a tree bit, has the spare hand. Um, and I'm going to make use of this sprue to make both the engine and the carriage, because it's only just a pu one pusher engine and one pusher carriage. So what you can see here is the sprue, and you can see that, when I hold it the right way up, that that sits perfectly on top, just there where it's coming around the corner. So that's probably going to be enough for the, uh, uh, for, for, for the, uh, to, to do the little carriage. Um, uh, I will need to uh, make it a little bit shorter, but I'll, I'll measure that and cut that down. Um, and then what I'm going to do is prime that and then paint it. So um, the uh, this is going to be red, the little carriage is red, 
And then behind the little carriage, let me just show you the picture, we have this tiny little engine. So I will cut another section of sprue for the engine. So once I've got those painted up, I will put them in place and then this piece is done, which is really cool. I'm very, very happy with how it's looking. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do that now. Um, I'll just use flat red, it won't be anything particularly dramatic, um, with a line of green if I can, so that it looks like it's got windows. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, I'm gonna get that, get that done and I'll bring you back when it is finished. So what we have here is my sprue that I've painted red, as you can see. And what I'm gonna be doing now is cutting it off of the end which I've clamped in with this little uh, wedding uh, position holder thing, <laughs> table marker, um, which are really, really good tip to get if you're looking at cutting up small, holding small things to paint. Now I'm gonna use my craft knife here because I don't want to pinch off the end. And one of the issues you'll find with um, snips, and my hand is in the way, so apologies, but one of the issues you'll find with snips is they actually crimp so they don't cut straight. And what you can see there is by doing that, I've got a completely straight cut. So what I'm now gonna do is put that in place. So there we are, that's where they're gonna go. So I'm just gonna get some super glue gel, put the bead on the bottom of each sprue and glue it down to the tracks. And that is officially the last thing that I need to do on this build, which has actually turned out Really rather better than I expected. And I know I say that a lot, but it just has. It's worked well. <laughs> it actually looks like the thing I was trying to model. Uh, I would like to try and put some smoke coming out of the top of the engine. Um, I'm not 100% sure I'm going to be able to do it well enough. That's my stretch. If I can do that before the end of tomorrow when the competition finishes, then I'll do it. If I can't, then I'm happy with how this is. So I'm going to call that done and I'm going to have a look and see whether I can do the smoke. But I'm very pleased with that. What a, what a lovely little build. So if we just pull this over, you can have a look at the picture. And then you can have a look at the model. I don't think that was too bad at all. Well, there we are. I think that was probably one of my favorite builds so far of all of the Encounter 10 by 10s that I've done. Really, really enjoyed that. I'm really pleased with how the color match came out on the grass, uh, amazed me. <laughs> I don't think of myself as being all that good at that. So that was a really, uh, really nice thing to see that come out so well. And then the whole thing just looks brilliant. I really am pleased with it, very proud of it indeed. Uh, and it does show that with a bit of practice, you can get these tiny scale things coming on. So hopefully this might inspire you to give it a go. If you think, oh, it's too small, I can tell you what, I would have said that was too small for me to try and make. And, and there I am, I've done it. <laughs> So let me know in the comments below uh, what you think, if you liked it. Uh, I do read all of them and I do reply to every single one, so don't be shy, please do. Uh, pop a comment below, I'd love to read them. Uh, and I wrap up by saying, as I always do, please stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.